I've decided that for the hatch and also for the side window, I'm going to duplicate our reference image in order to get the top view. So I'm going to press Shift D. I've got a new empty and we're going to rotate that in the X axis so that it's flat. And we're going to go into the top view, move it. And maybe it's in the right size. No, it's just a little bit small, but we'll just rescale it. So Z4 for transparency and GX to move it in the X. Uh, judging from where the thruster blocks are, actually, and where the umbilical is, actually this line here is the pod line. And it's actually the service module stuff that's beyond that. So we need to scale that the reference image more okay that seems to be good enough except it's rotated the wrong way um i i think i'll just rotate the pod actually to match it and it's difficult for me to decide which side i actually want the window but nothing else is asymmetric right now so i'm just going to rotate the pod and that's around the z-axis so that our window actually faces the right way. Our window is over here. We need it over here, so 90 degrees, basically. Our window is a little bit low according to this. But it should be the right height according to this. I mean, yeah, it's right there. So it's a little bit hard for me to decide. Well, maybe it's the scaling. Maybe it's the reference image scaling. Let's scale it up a little bit more. All right. Well, we'll, we'll assume that. So we've got a little small side window here. Oh, I left the other window in the original location. Let me apply its location and apply its rotation and then move it along uh, in the Z axis 90 so it fits properly. Okay, applying the location and rotation means that it'll go along with the pod because the pod is basically centered on zero zero right now. So that's just convenience. I'll also apply the scale and I'll apply the new rotation as well. Same for the pod. Okay, so now we're going to get another cube to help us create the hatch. Um. Yeah, but this time we're going to sort of cut out the hatch shape from the pod instead of creating a gap. There are tools to use for this sort of thing, but I'm deliberately not using those because people might not have them, like hard ops or box cutter. Last time with the window, I made a mistake of uh, rotating in edit mode when I actually want to rotate in object mode for sure. I don't think this whole thing is the hatch. I think that's a misinterpretation. I think this round bit here is, it's still like that, is the hatch. And the rest is sort of the hatch area. Ah, it looks, sort of looks weird in this view though. <laughs> Uh, but we actually put reference lines on the body of this for where we want it, so that helps. We sort of want the top at that line and the bottom at that line. Let's select both this cube and the pod in object mode so that we get the information for both and tab in. Okay, now the top of the hatch is smaller than the bottom. So scale X to sort of get that sort of sense. And once again, we'll bevel the edges. Control B. Um, it's more wide than tall. Now it's obviously curved, so uh, it's curved like the surface, so we're not dealing with that right now. We're not dealing with that right now. We're just sort of getting the basic shape here. And also making sure it cuts the right part of the interior. 
so let's try it. Let's say pod and get into object mode. Oh, I, I haven't got the pod selected. I've got the wrong thing. Want the pod? Boolean. There's a whole shrink wrapping thing. Shrink wrap. Target. Pod. So this conforms the thing to the pod. I think we need more geometry for it to actually be able to shrink wrap like that. And also it doesn't understand this when there's... It's an end gone, so it has that's a problem for it. Okay, let's fix this cube so that it's not an end gone. So we get to show how to do that. Uh, click these two points, J join. Click these two points, J join. These two, and th I'm doing it this particular way because this is the direction we want it to curve in. You know what? Now let's uh, do this without having done the shrink wrap. It's, it'll be a cleaner model. And again, the reason why we're doing it like this is because the surface that we're going to try and match it with is curved in this direction. If it was curved in the opposite direction, like here, if it was some curve like this, we might want to join them horizontally instead. Okay, now there actually should not be any n-gons on this thing. We might want a little bit more geometry to help things out. So I've added those there. And probably we're going to be adding other details like the window. So I'm gonna just add some more like that too. Now, I'm curious to see what's gonna happen if I tell it to shrink wrap this to the pod. It looks like it's a better fit. Yeah, so now it's a better fit. Let me apply this and just... Of course, now we've got all sorts of stuff going on though and it smushed it together too much see I mean everything's now on a flat plane which is not exactly what I want okay forget shrink wrapping it was an idea to cut down on time but we won't do it oh we want to bully in the pod And so it's got to cut the hole there in both the interior and exterior. We might want a little bit more thickness here than what we've given. We've made the interior very close to the edge here. But we'll leave that be for now. Okay, so that is the cut. And we are going to get the hatch. We'll call it the hatch back and we're gonna do this the hard way really to make the hatch fit okay I don't quite like how things are going on with the hatch so I'm just gonna apply the boolean on the pod and I'm gonna delete the hatch thing that I had and we are going to use this gap to create the new the new hatch hopefully and I'm just going to select the outer edge first. In fact, we'll only be working with the outer edge. We'll just solidify to create the inner side of the hatch. Some of these could just be dissolved. Yeah, I, I guess we can do some cleaning up here before we do this. So let's merge at last on that one. This one can just be merged with that one. Uh, these points, let me just merge and merge those two they just the boolean always creates these extra points that we don't need and which will cause problems later it's possible to avoid this there's there are techniques you can also dissolve the vertices that's another thing to do but you'll have to be careful to decide whether the vertice vertex is actually useful or not to maintain the shape of the hatch. Okay, I'm gonna select the outer edge now. Okay, I'm actually going to duplicate this edge. <laughs> it's not gonna like this, but Shift D and then P 
separate. So now it's uh, its own edge here. You yeah, have edit mode. And so editing this. And so make sure we have a continuous edge here. So fill. And now it's a weird shape. Then we have to be careful here. We gotta join vertices to try and make sure it's not too strange. And then merging stuff that's close together. Okay, and shade smooth and make sure we've got the auto smooth on move smooth on. And now we've got a nice surface. So basically I just joined stuff to eliminate as I mean to create as many quads as possible. So it looks like this now, just crisscrossing it using join between vertices. It doesn't look wonderful, but we could shift vertices around to make it a little bit better. At least it's not a horrible shape. And then we are going to do solidify. And now we've got our hatch again. So backslash on a numpad to get this back. And now we have this little hatch as a separate piece. And I'll call that hatch. And the hatch has a little window. And the window is, let's look in the top view. Uh, it's right around here-ish. It's off to one side a little bit. We've got some geometry, but it's probably not enough for the window. It'll still have end gons and all that business. So, but we'll create a cylinder, scale it down. And we'll also want another window on the opposite side where the side window is. So I think 90 degrees in X. We'll make it longer to make sure it cuts through. And obviously it's a little bit too big. Let's go like that. Make sure that it seems to be lined up right. Let's make the hatch a little bit thicker. So that it actually posts out on the inside a little bit. And I'll just, we'll just uh, go ahead and do the Boolean before this solidify. Now you can see we've got an edge here because of the boolean. Um, what we can do is create, uh, well, actually that'll solve a little spare dot there. We'll just join this with that. Though we have a triangle there, but that's probably okay. We're gonna try and limit the bounds of this window, GG to slide things around. Okay, and uh, this little edge here, ah, we didn't get, let's just bend around this. Okay, now it looks okay. All right, so if we hide the cylinder, we get that sort of thing, ah, but we've got an issue here, don't we? We're just moving these along. Yep, moving them aside worked. Okay, it's a pretty thick hatch. Ooh, this side, well, okay, we're doing the solidify first. Okay, yeah, it's better to do the solidify first. Let's just apply and our this will be our little window just gonna shade smooth and auto smooth and scale Z make it a little window oh, of course we have to do the boolean first let's so applying the boolean and then on window 
to and you know what let's uh copy this for the other side window so i'm going to duplicate it and move it off to the side here and unrotate it so that we can rotate it later but we'll assume that they're going to have two windows of the same size maybe i don't know whether the size the side window is the same size but okay now we can scale in z make it small Move it sort of inside. Okay, it looks like an okay window. Uh, it's a little bit not quite meeting the top edge there. Okay, that's a fine window for me. And so that's window two. We'll call the first one window one. They'll all have the same material for windows. And we have this other window. the side window. They all have sort of an area around them, which is annoying, <laughs> uh, that we'll have to sort of texture differently. Okay, and we're going to need to boolean again. Now let's take some liberty as to the side window placement to make sure that we have edges available. And I'll run another edge right below it. And we'll have that edge go around. Won't connect it yet, but... Yeah, we'll leave it like that. Okay, so now it's there. And let's boolean the pot again. And it'll have a little gap like that. And we will apply. And scale down so that we have a little window and the interior seems a little bit distorted by that but okay that's good enough for me so we've got a little side window there now the RCS thrusters which is a whole bunch of stuff and we are going to use the cone for those, but the cone will be starting with a cylinder because we still want the end. And we're going to assume that these are mostly the same size. We can see the little thrust reports here, 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 here. And so they're under this window, right around here-ish, at least one set. And there'll be another set on the opposite side. So we'll be doing symmetry. And then right at the top, this too. So we're just going to resize this. And make it look like an RCS port. And we can probably use the top view as a reference. Leave the cylinder larger than we technically need the port so it sticks out. Nope. Come on, cylinder. So if you take a look at it, well, that's not quite the angle that we need. We'll probably have to be angled, and we want it global this time. I'll just apply rotation right now. They look sort of like that, and what's happening is the port is oriented like this, the nozzle is like that, and there's a set of two. This window might be a little bit smaller than they really have it. I think it looks like these will be mirrored across X, and actually maybe they'll be a little bit more over here. And then there's an, it's another set of two pointing in a different direction in between them. And we can make sure that they're not clipping into the interior here. We made the interior so that there is space. Oh, nope, nope. 
Let's see, six. Okay, let's mirror things. Let's see how it goes mirrored across the pod. There's going to be another set there and another set on the opposite side like that. And same for this one. Mirror across the pod. And that seems to be basically what they have. Uh, we might want to make sure they're lined up. They seem to be lined up very well on the real thing. So let's make sure they're lined up like that. Okay, and then I think the two ports in the middle are downward facing ones. So I'm going to just duplicate this with the current mirroring. Gonna undo that tilt. We probably want to rotate along the x axis 90 degrees. I think they're down. They might be upward facing. That would make more sense actually. So negative 90. So like that. And if we take a look, they should not be interfering with each other. It should be possible to connect to all of them with the fuel lines independently. Otherwise something has gone horribly wrong. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's uh, do the booleans for all of them. But we note that, uh, let's see. Let's see how the pod looks right around there. And we've got some lines there. It should be relatively well contained, but I think I'll run another loop right here, just above them and below, like so. Okay, so let's try and once again cut things into the pod with booleans. Uh, great decision. I'll just pile on the booleans here with the cylinders, which are representing our RCS ports. And let's hide the RCS ports for a sec to see how they look. Well, um, these seem to be pointed, a, well, no, actually theirs is a little bit pointed downward too. You can see in the diagram over there, they are tilted downward. That's just how they are. So it seems like we've got the basic idea right. And those are a little bit low. The bottom end is closer to that. So I think we've got the positioning basically right. Uh, there's a little bit of issue here because of the n-gons we're producing with the boolean. But in the grand scheme of things, I think that'll be all right too. I don't think that'll be too distracting. Okay, so we've got those RCS thrusters. Now taking a look at the top, it seems like they do have an ejectable arrow cap, as annoying as that is. <laughs> I'm, I'll have to think about whether I want to bother with that right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll create some more definition here, just for the sake of having... Uh, just, just a, uh, looks like our bottom there is... Okay, I'll put it a little bit lower there. I just wanted to put some detail there. Around the windows and all, there are black areas. I have to decide whether we've got enough. I think it's okay. We'll basically be painting this whole thing black there. And probably this all black there. Just th thinking through how it's going to be painted a little bit. I am now going to separate the interior from the exterior on this. I think we're okay. Okay, so going in, getting our interior polygon. I see a polygon that isn't right. Oh, somehow we managed to pull this thing when we weren't supposed to. I see some polygons I don't want, so. These delete faces. Well, I don't know what went on there, but I hope we fixed it. Okay, as I was saying, 
Select all of those, those. Yep. Those, those. And it's gonna get a little bit complicated around here. The hatch is technically gonna have to be both in the interior and exterior view. In Kerbal Space Program, the IVA view is sort of separate. Whereas for my pass-through system, if you've seen those videos in Kerbal Space Program, the interior just stays with it. The way I do it with the pass-through system is simpler in terms of putting it together and orienting everything, but it's more complicated in terms of colliders. The way Curl Space Program IVA works is simpler in terms of colliders, but more complicated in terms of how to orient things. So I've selected the interior polygons. I'm going to press P to separate the selection. And I'm going to go out of edit mode and call this pod interior. Okay, and so if we do that, that is what the pod interior is. And again, nothing will appear. Uh, we've got a little bit of a little point issue there. Okay, uh, this will not be visible from the outside view. It's only visible from the inside view. And this is where we're going to put all the seats and such. Let's in fact create the floor where we're going to have their seats. And I'm gonna take a look at about high, how high that ought to be in other views. It's pretty low, maybe here. And notice that the, the normal is not the right way around. So we go mesh normals flip in order to get the little blue line pointing the right way. You can see now it's pointing the right way. Okay, so that's a floor for us. And then we would put seats in. And I'm not gonna tell you how to model seats separately. I'm just gonna import my existing seat. <laughs> import FBX. So I've been using the same seats for everything. And I'm gonna continue using the same seats. So, but they, they don't want to have the this piston part down here. It's all part of this. We don't need these cylinder bits because it just, the seats are just stuck to the bottom, stuck to the floor. And just looking at the images, we've got a five seat one and a seven seat one. Let's see what we can fit. So taking the seat, we will rotate in Z90. Mm. Oh, somebody will be able to look out the window. And this 90, oops. Okay, well, let's see what we can do here. The seat is a little bit big. It would make sense for the hatch to be here for these uh, seats like this. And so there seems to be three and then four instead of a bottom rank. We'll just select hierarchy and shift D to duplicate. We're really adding a lot of geometry to this now. The seats seem to be really tight in, and these are pretty big seats that I have here, so they should give plenty of room. Uh, the, their seats have little footrests, though. If I make the seats a little bit smaller, I could probably fit the... Well, we can try. Let's get seven. Um, let me see in solid view whether things are clipping things. No, that's okay, as long as they stick their legs out. Well, that's still pretty good. Let's see. And we can just, since it is in the y axis, we can just 
move it to negative the negative y position. And we have those seven seats. So yes, it can fit seven. It's a little bit snug, but they shouldn't be in here for too long. Okay, then yeah, it's up to you whether. But but, but uh, if you want to create the IVA view, putting seats is probably necessary. So anyway, we've got those. Let's get back to the full view and get the service module again. Heat shield. Uh, these cylinders, we have we applied the booleans. We have not. Let's just apply the booleans for the RCS thrusters. And we'll get rid of the cylinders that were standing in for the RCS. Uh, you know what? Maybe we should save those. They're probably the same size as the ones on the service module. So we'll we'll save this O2 one so that we can use those to size the service module one. I'll just apply the scale right now. Okay. So we've got the service module sort of RCS pods that they have. And we will work on those. 